Hello and welcome to Ginger Prime. My name is Brian and this is the Final Fantasy XIV Machinist Controller Guide. And in this guide, we're gonna have a lot of fun, but these things can tend to run a little bit long. So just know you can always jump through and skip through these intros. You can skip to any chapter of this video that you find the most useful. If you've seen any of my other controller guides, just note that the first section is gonna be focusing in on targeting, how to set up your controller, all the tips and tricks that you need to know when getting started jumping into the world of Final Fantasy XIV on a controller. So if you've already seen any of the previous, you can always just skip that section and jump to what hopefully interests you the most about setting up this job on a controller for your skills. But that being said, if this video doesn't answer your questions, you can always use the top link in the description to jump into the Final Fantasy XIV playlist, of which that if there's updated guides, uh, updated information about this job, you can be sure to check that out as well. Um, but most likely you'll probably find some really good information, especially there. Also, kind of a final note before we jump into the core aspect of this guide, if you're considering checking out this game, and this is the video that's for some reason being recommended to you, uh, just note you can start this game for free and play all the way up to level 60, and that's actually through the expansion Heavensward. I'd highly recommend that if you're considering jumping in, you start there, you check it out, see if it is for something for yourself. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into The Machinist and talk about why I love this job so much. So if you have never played with the controller, just note that it's very easy to start and it's easy to jump in and get that set up. So first and foremost, you wanna to go to your system menu and character configuration. Here is where you can easily toggle between the two. So if you're not used to system menu, you actually have this XIV menu and you can see character configuration, which would be the K key on your keyboard. So switching over into mouse and keyboard mode, you can see here I have actually two different complete UIs. Now here is my window and you can see uh, that as I move around in legacy mode, that by moving the stick, the, the character moves in whatever direction I'm placing them. If I shift this over into standard mode and I press back on the D-pad or the directional pad in this case, the, the stick, uh, you can see here I actually walk backwards rather than turn and run in that direction. Just as a pro tip, if you ever needed to kind of resize any of these windows, on a controller, you can press the R3 as a click and you can easily cycle between any different size of these windows. So as you're working with the UI, you have full and complete control with the controller, but you might really kind of want to check out my ultimate controller guide for more information. And that's also linked in the description of this video for you. So standard type versus legacy type, it doesn't necessarily matter what you choose. Just find something that's comfortable for you when playing this game. Now let's jump over into kind of our filters section. This is gonna be real critical when playing on a controller because targeting is going to be an aspect that you're gonna deal with a lot, especially as a DPS. You can see here, I'm gonna focus in on basically two types, sheath and unsheath. When your weapon is out, and when your weapon is put away. You also have the ability of advanced filtering by holding down the L1 or the L bumper uh, button and pressing any of the face buttons to easily switch between any targeting sections that you want. But go ahead and focusing in on this, you actually could start with a pre-built uh, dropdown as needed, but you can see here I'm using non-party player characters. I'm turned off party members because you'll automatically have a party members filter by pressing up and down on the D-pad, like as a, as a button, like you see here, I'm using up and down to navigate. But if I click outside the window, pressing up and down would cycle through my party list. So I'd decide not to accidentally select a party member because I can do so automatically by using just the up and downs. I do have Alliance members turned on. I do have pets and minions turned off. All enemies turned on, aggroing, duty specific, NPCs and objects. This is important so you can interact with the game when you're not fighting it. I have minions and signs turned off, but you can play around with whatever makes the most sense for you. Under the enemies drawn, uh, under the enemy's weapon drawn here, this, I have the enemy's filter, which is all enemies, aggroing enemies, duty specific enemies, anything that I want to fight. Let me go ahead and show you guys that actually in action. So while I'm just kind of running around the world with my weapon put away, if I just kind of press left and right on the D-pad, I'm gonna cycle through anything and everything that I can. What's going on, Soro? Let me go ahead and wave to my friend. <laughs> but anyhow, um, if I have my weapon out, and I can actually <laughs> lock on target, but with nothing targeted and I have my weapon out, I can actually press left and right on the D-pad and this is going to just filter and cycle through enemies that are available because I'm in a filter set of enemies right here. So anything that I was able to target, I am unable to target right now. And if I actually press down, like if I was gonna draw my weapon again, but if I have a target selected, you can see here, I actually lock on 
to that target. So you can use that as a, especially if you're learning and trying to work on positionals and get a good gauge of where you are Zelda style, you actually have that lock on feature by just clicking the L3 button in this case. So that is one option. The other option you actually have when targeting is if you're holding down the left trigger or the right trigger, you can see here, I'm starting to activate skills, but pressing the R button, uh, like uh, L1 and R1, like this is gonna allow me to target, uh, actually tab target between different enemies while even while I'm focused in on attacking. So if I go ahead and use an attack, I can still shift targets to another target. This is especially very helpful if different things are firing off on all cylinders. So just note, that is an easy way to kind of switch your targets, especially if something is going on and you don't want to sit here and stop and press left and right on the D-pad, so to speak. So let me go ahead and reset the enemy's hate for me. And there we go. So that essentially is targeting 101. Hopefully, uh, it you know, it takes a little bit maybe to get used to, a little bit of muscle memory, but over, overall practicing with it will become second nature to you. Now let me jump back into character configuration and I'm gonna jump into hop bar settings. Here I have display recast times. I have hide unassigned slots, so you can see here I can turn that on and off as needed. I have display hotbar numbers, so I can turn that on and off as needed. Then I have enable hotbar cycling, include pet hotbar when cycling, enable drag and drop repositioning, and you can see here I've got hotbar three, four, five, six, and seven turned on. So if I like uncheck that, you can see here automatically that entire hotbar goes away. Now I've, I'll show you guys how I set skills here with the controller in just a few minutes, but just note that this bar right here is just to communicate cooldowns to me. All right, and so from here, I'm gonna go into my sharing uh, tab. This means that if it is unchecked, it's gonna be job and or class specific. As you play through the game, some classes turn into jobs and they actually have two different setups. So just note that a class and a job will actually not be shared as a part of your HUD and your layout and things like that. Your HUD is actually has only four things. We'll cover that in a second, but <laughs> just note uh, you have hotbar one through seven that I have as uh, not shared job specific. Then I have eight, nine, and 10, which are gonna be specific. Now for your cross hotbar, I only have seven and eight, but you can use whatever makes the most sense for you in this case. Again, this is something where I would put my, you know, sprint, my, you know, uh, limit break, my mounts, things like that. Things that I want to cross all jumps, no matter what. Something, you know, common, obviously like a macro or <laughs> your wonders tails or a sprint. Those are, those are really good things because every job has access to them. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. Now under the cross hop bar, I have the always enable, always display. If I, you turn that off, you can see here it actually gets cleaned up until you actually press a button and it kind of pops in. So if you want a little bit cleaner UI, you can actually play around with that as well. Uh, I have turned off display hotbar help, but as you're learning to use the system, in this one you actually have to hit apply for it to actually apply. You'll see here if you're looking for those different skill names and things like that, as you're learning to play the job, that could end up helping. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Uh, pet hotbar is on, use mountain hotbar, enable duty, action input, and display control guide as needed. Now I'm in hold mode, but for accessibility issues, if you need to play around with toggle mix, just note, feel free to go and just find out what is the most comfortable. You will lose access to the expanded cross hotbar. As you can see here, holding down left trigger and then right trigger is going to bring up my hotbar two and my hotbar seven in this case. So you have access to that. Then I also have always display the W cross hop bar. You can turn that off and you can see that just disappears until I pop that up uh, <laughs> into way, but that's really gonna be up to you. I also have return to cross hop bar after W cross hop bar input. So if I was gonna do something like flamethrower, you can see here I'm automatically back in to that as an aspect. So you have a lot of freedom with it. I recommend using the expanded cross hop bar the double tap where you tap a trigger, tap a trigger uh, for one-off uh, action items, things that are either gonna buff or that you're not using that often because uh, while it is fast to jump into it, I find that I don't like to use that a part of my rotations. Uh, then under custom, I have enabled my expanded controls with left trigger and right trigger. Here you can see this. And you can see here I'm going from left trigger and right trigger going to seven right, which is gonna be mount, sprint, uh, all that good stuff. And then over here, right trigger, then left trigger to left, which is going to be job specific. Things like, you know, I'm gonna heal myself, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stun, I'm gonna heal or put up defense for the party. Lots of different options that you have available to you. So feel free to play around with this as needed and as desired. Then on, uh, down here, I have enable customization when my weapon is sheathed for set selection. You can see here when my weapon is sheathed, one, seven, and eight. So if I actually just tap the R bumper, you can see here I can cycle through one, seven, and eight. And if I bring out my weapon, in this case, and I tap, I'm gonna stay on one. You can always switch to any hot bar that you want by holding down right bumper and then using any of the D pads to easily cycle through those uh, as well. So that gives you a lot of flexibility 
here and that's what I would highly recommend taking a look at and playing around with the settings to get it just to have that right feeling for you. Now we've come so far into this guide, hopefully that has been a help. Now the rest of the guide is going to be focusing on the machinist, the skills, what I've got laid out, how and why I've chosen to lay it out that way, and hopefully this will give you some insight to setting up your skills for the machinist. Now just note that if you want to take this and make it your own, that is awesome. In fact, that is the goal of what we're about to dive into. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and talk about actually setting skills on your hotbar. You'll note that as you level up through the game, you can actually use this setup uh, to be able to drive various things. But you'll notice I don't have hotshot on my bar. That's because a trait that you get later turns hotshot into air anchor, which I have right here. So just note that where I have air anchor, that is where hotshot lives. So if I actually go to place air anchor, let's say hotshot on the bar in a specific spot from my uh, actions and traits, there's a couple ways I can do this. You can actually press like your Y or triangle button and it's gonna say, hey, where would you like to set this on your hotbar? You can do this for any object, any inventory item or more. It's a nice little menu, hot <laughs> set to hotbar. I'm gonna go ahead and set it exactly in the same spot as air anchor, boom, and that's actually what it is. As I level down, that will be hot shot, but that trait automatically levels that skill up to air anchor. Now let's say I want to move skills around on my bar itself. You can actually highlight by holding down the right trigger, press your select or back button, and you can easily pick the skill that you want by pressing the button, pick the skill that you want to switch it with, and press the other button. So you can see here you can easily swap and move items around very easily without the, the need for a mouse or keyboard in this case. Let's say I wanted to go ahead and delete that air anchor. I can press that, and if I press it again, it will prompt me to delete that from my hotbar. Pressing the back button will clear that up. I can then go back here to hotshot and set that back on my hotbar. Becomes very second nature the more you kind of get used to it, so you can actually move all these skills around by just using that ability, holding down the active uh, left trigger or right trigger, pressing your select button, and you're gonna go into your edit hotbar mode. Pressing the select button again will get you out of that. Okay. But Brian, like that's all well and good, but how do you set items and things to the top hop bar here? Well, if you don't have a mouse and keyboard, you can actually press down on the L1 button and then you can press the right R3 button and you'll enter into what is called virtual mouse mode. This will turn your right stick into a virtual mouse and it'll move your cursor around. You can then use the right trigger and the left trigger to act as your right click and your left click. And so you can actually go and drag, move your mouse cursor around, drop them into place and then whenever you're done with this, you can press down on the L1 and then R3 and you're out of virtual mouse mode. And then your right stick will return you back to camera control. So that is one way that you can do it. It's a little bit more cumbersome because you cannot use the set to cross hotbar option to set to, to a specific hotbar. You have to use your cross hotbar in that case, but that is how it goes. So let's go ahead and now dive into the skill layout, what I've got and why I've got it. A, if you're struggling with the job, if you really want to make sure that you're maximizing your DPS and you're not using any kind of parsing tools or analytics, which we'll go into in a video coming soon to this channel, uh, just know that you can use uh, hop bars to lay out skills to feed you the information that you need. So here is a basic opener that I've got in which that I'm just trying to remind myself as I'm playing this job how to try and maximize my damage. You can feed any of the hop bars. That's why I have them float. <laughs> I have a bunch of invisible floating hop bars out here that I can just easily drag and drop skills to. So if there's something like you're just missing, uh, you can easily manage the UI any way that you want with that. One of the things that you have going for you within the HUD layout, you can actually have a couple of different settings. So you can have different layouts for perhaps different roles in the game and more. So just note that you can really jump in the HUD layout. You can uh, spend a lot of time here. This video is not gonna go into depth of the HUD layout. We've got that covered in other videos. We might have to refresh it with more quality of life things that continue to be brought into the game. But let's dive more into our skills now, shall we? So anyway, pro tip on DPSing and having various rotations, just so that as you're learning, you don't have to go and try to keep everything locked to memory. You can just say, hey, this is a really good opener. I wanna practice this, practice this, and feed that to you. Now on my bar, I wanna communicate second wind, barrel stabilizer, tactician, automation queen, queen override, air anchor, and drill. Air anchor and drill being some big heavy hitters that you wanna make sure that are always uh, being used. I also have like reassemble here, and we'll go more into this, just so that I can always pair it with either drill or air anchor depending on what is the most pressing thing to use at that time. I don't wanna be kind of jumping around to and fro with it. But these are to communicate just to me, hey, 
use your queen, use air anchor, like they're off. It doesn't matter where my eyes are, but this might be a little bit busier to you so you can have obviously a much cleaner UI. Here I've got my heat gauge and battery gauge that are set up in simple mode. Uh, all job gauges have a simple mode which you can easily switch between within the HUD layout. Over here on the W cross hop bar left, I've got foot graze. I've got my tender cure of dexterity, which is just a nice boost to my damage. I've got leg graze, head graze, arms length, and bio blaster. Uh, this is obviously shares a timer with drill, but just note that if I want to pop this on for a big old AOE damage uh, buff or debuff or other, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use that as needed. Then here I've got wildfire. I've got hypercharged, reassemble, ricochet, auto crossbow, goss round, heat blast, and spread shot. Being spread shot, an auto crossbow, and ricochet being a, kind of an AOE spread, I want to make sure I'm using these all the time, as best as you can. Make sure you're using your Gauss round and ricochet, but we'll, we're not going to dive too much into rotations of this. If you guys haven't seen Desperus uh, Final Fantasy XIV, be sure to go check out his channel. I'll include a link to him as well below if you guys want to get more in depth into kind of a kind of the dance routine, the, the rhythm game of your rotation within the game itself. But uh, this just allows me to be able to reassemble, especially if I'm doing, uh, and I got a lot of things going on, and I want to really kind of maximize my DPS. You can see here, auto crossbow, it's got a massive hit uh, to it. You can only be executed when in overheated. It's the same potency as you can see here with spread shot, but a much faster recast time. So you can pull these off much faster one after the next. Goss Round Heat Blast. Heat Blast is great because when you pair this with Wildfire, uh, you end up getting uh, stacking Wildfire as much as possible to get an extra burst of damage. And then you also are recharging your Goss Round and Ricochet. So this kind of all works in tandem, as in especially when in dungeons looking at AoE rotations, but also for single boss rotations to kind of pop in over here. Jump over here for a little bit and then pop back. All right, right hand side. Let's talk about here. I've got Heated Shot, Split Shot. Heated slug shot and heated clean shot for for lower level and leveling, uh, you know, uh, just know that split shot, slug shot, and then essentially a uh, clean shot in this case. So just setting those, we'll set, these will upgrade later on in the game itself. Goss round, which has three charges, ricochet, which has three charges. I always want to be trying to make sure that I'm weaving these in between these different skills, pairing these up to maximize my potential DPS output. Reassemble is going to guarantee you a, a critical and direct hit. So pairing that with a drill or a uh, air anchor is going to maximize that DPS for that skill itself. And so that's why I kind of want to have it always here. Uh, the risk obviously being you reassemble, these are off cooldown and you go ahead and use another weapon skill. Uh, obviously not the most ideal, but at least you know you want to make sure you're, you're knocking out your reassemble, especially because it comes up quite a bit in all fights. No reason to sit on it. You'll want to be using this. Then on the right hand side, I can double tap into Barrel Stabilizer, Bioblast again if I need, Flamethrower if I so desire, but as I've talked to other machinists, they say, ah, <laughs> it's really cool looking, but there's better rotations for you as well. Then you can see here Automation Queen, I can bring out my robot, then I got Tinnicure of Dexterity and an X Potion, especially if you're doing anything where you want to heal yourself like, you know, a Deep Dungeon or a Heaven on High uh, to that respect. Now if I jump into the Hot Bar 2, just to say, you know, I'm just going to close this out. Let's go into hot bar two. This is where if I do the expanded cross hopper, you'll see here, this is going to be my queen overdrive. This is going to allow me to have my queen use pile bunker with a potency of 800. So this is going to uh, be a real good finishing move itself. And you can see that it's listed right here, but uh, just note automation queen shuts down after you execute it. So if the action is not used manually while the automation queen is active, it will be triggered automatically immediately before they shut down. So this is good for if the boss is about to have an immob, you know, immort mortality, you can't hurt the boss. They're about to shift into a phase, but your queen's out, and it's not going to be you. You don't want to lose out on that extra DPS. Uh, head graze, tactician, uh, foot graze, and peloton as a way of kind of moving about. So you have quick access to those skills listed all right here as well. So that just gives you that ability to pop into there. So and then on the right hand side, sprint mount. Uh, let me break whatever really kind of floats your fancy not uh, as critical for me to kind of cover that in this video but that's going to be just how it is so we've covered that we've covered how you set your skills we've gone into my layout my choice for these skills it gives me the ability like if i'm just gonna focus here on a basic rotation just attacking gives me the ability to pop into Babel's barrel stabilizer do some ricochet keep on fighting 
Now you can see I'm going to reassemble, pop a drill, get a real big hit. Keep on rocking and I can have as an air anchor. So pulling that up. Now I can do a wildfire. This followed by this and you can see it's going to recharge this but I have a much faster time with that heat and that's going to help feed that up and then I can come back in here get racking going. I got drill again. You can see here I can have hyper overcharge going up. I'm trying to pull out my robot. There they are and robots coming out. Here's my queen. My big bad, my bad robot. So obviously as I talk through this I know I'm probably not making the most efficient sense but you can see here you have a lot of flexibility a lot of ease of use. I can now jump back in and over here and play around with a lot of different things and really make a lot of different choices. It feels very comfortable and there's a lot going on. I've always feel very busy with the job itself. Now reassemble is back off of cooldown and so is air anchor. So I can go and pair those two together and continue on my rotation. Obviously I want to keep ricocheting, keep goss barreling as I continue my fight and weave those in. So you feel really busy as a machinist at all times. Anyway guys, that's gonna wrap it up. Let's go ahead and take some time as we've want to, as people have tended to ask, See, here's my robot. All right, let's go ahead and use the queen. Get out of here. Use the ability. <laughs> and then they go ahead and disappear. So we'll go ahead and reset uh, the, uh, the damage. You want to, if you guys didn't usually get asked about my various glamour or character setup, not really the biggest glamour, but you can see here I'm using 510 gear, the Exarch hand gone, uh, the Exarch hood of aiming, the Exarch top of aiming, Exarch arm guards of aiming, Exarch slash of aiming, and the bottoms of aiming. And the boots, followed by the uh, ring, ring, bracelet, choker, ear and earrings. And it gives me this, this wonderful look. And hopefully you can find some awesome gear and weapons for you to use in the game itself. Well, that's going to wrap it up, guys. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found some value in it. Again, like I said, if you did, hit that like button. And if you didn't, hit that dislike button. You can always let me know if you got any thoughts or any tips or any tricks or anything I missed in the comments below. Always be sure to check there, guys, for any feedback from others. Uh, that way we can, as a community, hopefully help either get you into this game or improve the quality of life of your time with Final Fantasy XIV. Anyway, guys, like I said, this is Ginger Prime. My name's Brian. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you have a fantastic day. I hope to see you in my next video. But until then, take care. This video is sponsored by me, Ginger Prime. Hopefully you'll check out my podcast channel, Ginger Gaming Radio, which we have lots of guests, lots of great conversations, and even more highlights. Links are in the description below. Let me know what you think. Thanks.